James chapter 2, verses 20, 24, and 26. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. We have to bear fruit. And uh, let me hop over to the verse that, that I'm sure uh, many naysayers are, are thinking about and bringing up. Let's bring that up right now. Oh, you're a good little girl. I see you, darling. She's definitely a kisser. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. All right, darling. Okay. Okay, this is the infamous verse that everyone's going to pull up. That's against once they'd always say, let me break it down for you and show you how people have been getting this uh, incorrect. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and then not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Right? Okay, so what works are these? What works are they talking about? They're talking about ceremonial works. The, the law of uh, Moses, 613, impossible to keep. Uh, Old Testament works, the law of Moses. The ceremony works is what is being spoke about in this passage. Not works of obedience, holiness, and repentance. Holiness, obedience, repentance, relationship. Throw relationship in there. Are requirements for salvation. And I know people are going ape right now, losing their minds, some, some of you. Pray about it. Don't trust what I'm telling you. But the works spoken about here are ceremonial works, not holiness, not repentance, uh, not obedience, not a relationship with the Lord. Those are requirements. That's that's 101. That's salvation 101. If you really read the totality of the Bible, it's very clear. If you, if you proof text a couple of verses and you don't know the verse in context of the audiences and what have you, you're going to be misled by these wolves or the, these ignorant ones. Study to show thyself approved, and we won't fall for these tricks and traps. Be led by the Holy Spirit to teach you all things. And of course, the verses I just gave you about James, how faith without works is dead. And that, you know, the branches that don't bear any fruit are going to be removed and thrown into the fire. You have to produce fruit. Obedience. Led by the Holy Spirit. Repentance. The Lord revealed to me in a dream we should repent daily. And he knows our hearts. It's when uh, when we get in trouble is when we fall back, back into the old ways, back into our old habits that are habitual, habitual lifestyle of sin. That's when we get in trouble. And you know, you can't just go back to your old ways, your old sins, and then say and then repent every day and then keep doing it, doing it every day. You know what I mean? You can't just say, "Oh, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. I won't do it again." And then the next day you're doing it. The next day you're doing it. The next day you're doing it. Sure, it might take some time to overcome these sins. When we are weak, he is strong. And it is finished, not, through, not by power, not by might, but through his spirit. So we rely on the Holy Spirit, but we have to feed the spirit. So that way our flesh isn't so strong making us sin. And I fell away a few times myself. I'm, I'm nobody special. And I noticed when I'm in the word and I'm praying, staying prayed up, and in worship, it's easy to overcome sin. When you're not in the Word, you're not feeding the Spirit, the flesh is, is going to be strong. And you're, you're, you're going to fall back into sin a lot easier. So that's why we, it's so critical to be led by the Holy Spirit and feed the Spirit, not the flesh. It's so critical, so crucial. But it might take time. It might take a, you know, a couple weeks, a couple months, or what have you. As long as you're making progress and really trying, God will show you and pray to God to help you out. We can't do it on our own. We're not that powerful. All right, so here we go with uh Okay, let's let's hop over to Matthew 7 verses 13 through 14. This is Jesus speaking. 
Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So what's Jesus saying here? He's saying that narrow is the path to eternal life. Broad is the way to destruction, eternal lake of fire. Few will find the narrow path, he says. Many will fall into the broad path. If it was once saved, always saved, saying one sinner's prayer, and that, that's it, you're saved. That sounds pretty easy to me. It sounds super easy, really. So it's something to think about. Narrow is the path that leads to eternal life. Few will find it. It's not, a, it's not an easy path, easy walk. Obedience to Jesus, you have to give up your life, as other verses say. Those who give up their life will gain it. Those who don't give it up will lose it. Something to ponder.